What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, well, would you look what's on the screen? It appears to be an official rule manual for the new Digimon trading card game in English. Yeah, that's right. An official English version of the rule manual has gone and been posted on the official Digimon site. This is wonderful, wonderful news. Now, straight off the bat, hey, does this mean that we're going to be getting an English version of the game? No, this is not confirmation of an English version of the game. Got that? Good. Does this make it more likely we're getting an English version of the game? Oh my lordy, yes it does. Like, seriously does. I'm so excited. <laughs> and you should be too. Because you see... Why bother translating it into English if, you, if you're not going to go and print them in English? Now, one of the things I noticed straight away here, we do not have English scans of the cards. So we see Cordramon here it is still the Japanese card. We got the Red Tamer, we've got Gaia Force all the way through this. They are using Japanese versions of the cards. That is a bad sign. If we saw English scans of the cards, I'd be ready to come out right now and be like, yeah, there's an English version coming. But again, if you're launching a game in Japan, and you've got the Japanese website, and you've got the rulebook in Japanese, and the people playing are in Japan and are Japanese, or at the very least, speak Japanese, and read Japanese, or you would imagine so with them being in Japan, there wouldn't be much cause to go and have an English version of the rulebook now, would there be? This is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. No. It does not confirm an English version of the game, let's be super clear. But it certainly does give us much more reason to think that there will be one coming in the not-too-distant future. Now, here's the really cool thing for me. This is what I took out of the rulebook more than pretty much anything else. English phrases. We now actually have English phrases. So things like Digi-Egg. Are they Digitama? Are they Baby Digimon? Are they Digi-Egg? What would the official term be when they came out in English? Digi-Egg. We now have confirmation that they are called Digi-Egg. Similarly, we've got Digivolve, not Evolve. So we have a Digivolve effect. Oh, how cool is that? We've got a summoning cost rather than a playing cost. And DP is confirmed as Digimon Power, although honestly, I, I don't really know how they, they could go any further than that. Tamer cards are in fact called Tamer cards, and we have a security effect. Not a security skill or security ability or anything like that. It is a security effect. Option cards are very much called option cards, and we have effects rather than skills or abilities. And I don't know whether I think about this way more than other people do, but for me, it's important. And we have security pile, not security cards or security stack. Although obviously the cards in the security pile must be security cards, but we have confirmation that it is the security pile. We've got the playing field and it is confirmed that we have, no, it's not here yet. We'll get there in a minute. The trash pile, not discard pile, not graveyard, not trash, the trash pile. And we have confirmation that it is the nursery area rather than the raising area. This is one of the main ones we've all been saying wrong. And look, it, it's not our fault, okay? Firstly, we're working off Japanese translations. Secondly, even when we get the Japanese translations perfectly correct, we still cannot account for localization, whereby raising area might make perfect sense in Japanese, but when they translate it into English, nursery area makes way, way more sense. So that's very, very cool. Now, a lot of this, I mean, we already know, right? We've done the rules. I've done a video on the rules of the game. We can, we can look at that later, all right? I'll link it in the description. You can go check that one out at your leisure. The whole point of today is just looking at the fact that we've got an English rule book, what that means, and what we can learn from it that we didn't know before. It is confirmed as the memory gauge. We all pretty much assumed that was going to be it. But again, we all assumed it was the raising area, not the nursery area. So again, let's, let's pay attention to this kind of stuff. 
Now, what is very interesting to me, and I wouldn't read too much into this, it still says determine who goes first by rock, paper, scissors. Now, I told you this when we got the rules first time round. In Japan, in Japanese tournaments, Pokemon TCG games, whoever goes first is decided by rock, paper, scissors, which is regarded generally as a game of skill rather than a game of luck. Whereas in tournaments outside of Japan, UK, US, Europe, etc., who goes first is determined by a random coin flip or dice roll, which is the same thing, you know, evens are heads and odds are tails kind of thing. I will be very interested. If that makes its way over here, that is one of the things I really want an answer to. Is it still going to be rock, paper, scissors? Because that doesn't match with what we have outside of Japan for Pokemon. It is very much more of a cultural thing in Japan that they would use rock, paper, scissors, whereas we would randomize it. But again, don't read too much into it because we're not there yet. We have active and rest state, which is quite important. And then we've got a lot of things we've seen before. It is the nursery phase rather than the raising phase, but that makes perfect sense. And they do refer to it just as a nursery and the nursery area, so presumably you can use either of them. And then a lot of the rest of it just kind of goes through what we've seen before. Going through the rules of the game, Digimon's DP dropping to zero, doing the attacking, attacking the opposing player, Digimon cards, option and tamer cards, a lot of stuff we saw before. Defend yourself with blocker. Now, it is passing, but again, what else are they going to call it? And then we get to the glossary. And a lot of this is kind of what we would expect. All stuff I've already gone for, you know, we've already gone through in this video. But one thing I will say here quite nicely is we've got confirmation. And I don't know whether this, um, I don't know whether this annoys me more than other people. But we've got, where are we looking here? Pierce and jamming. Why is it not piercing and jamming? I suppose it does make grammatical sense, but it's still weird to me. Confirmation that it is pierce. That is the one where if you take down a resting Digimon, you also get a security check. Although it is referred to here as check the opponent's security, not performing a security check. And we've got jamming. The Digimon cannot be deleted in a battle with a security Digimon. Oh, yeah. That's probably a fairly important one here. Digimon in this game are not referred to as having been knocked out, KO'd, destroyed, or anything along those lines. We refer to the Digimon as having been deleted. That's not a word I've heard anybody... Now, I might have missed it. There might be YouTube videos and channels I've not checked out or articles I've not read. If anyone is using this terminology, I apologize. But as it stands at the moment, it really does look like deleting has kind of jumped us a little bit here. Is a phrase that we were not expecting. But when you take out a Digimon, it is referred to as deleting them. And we also have confirmation here of... Well, the, the, the stages. Fresh is level 2. Rookie is level 3. Champion is level 4. Ultimate is level 5. Mega is level 6 and above. Remember, as it stands at the moment, Omnimon or Omegamon, choose your phrasing, is the only level 7 we've seen. There is no level 8, 9, 10 or any of that malarkey. So it's only really Omegamon or Omnimon that would really count for above level 6. But we got confirmation of that. And also confirmation that... Well, it says property is one of the traits of a Digimon, but I, I, well, I suppose they're a specific kind of trait, like vaccine data, virus, and, and free. And similarly, type is a kind of trait. So I suppose I get that. We do, like I said a minute ago, we use Digivolve rather than Evolve. There's not much new in this, to be honest with you. What we do see, however, is confirmation actual confirmation of the phrasing that we should be using and maybe i care more about this stuff than other people but i really do care about phrasing and making sure i'm doing this right i love that we've got this and i showed you the other day how new evolution pretty much instantly sold out in japan we've seen stores in japan over on twitter actually posting if you want digimon look we've got the restock in but come down quickly we are expecting them to sell out very quickly. We've got a 
Facebook group with four and a half thousand members for a Japanese card game. We don't have any confirmation that this game is coming out outside of Japan, or at least, you know, in the Western world, US, Europe, etc. But the signs that Bandai really need to, and are considering it, are building day by day. I suppose maybe some of their consumers in Japan want an English language manual? But come on. It's a good sign, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very good sign. So now it's over to you guys. I want to know how excited you are about this. I want to know how confident you feel in an English release. And I'd like to know your thoughts on the phrasing and stuff therein. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Digimon and a bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Play.